Bob Warfield from CNC Cookbook, and today I want to talk about how to tame chatter. Let's start at the beginning. What is chatter? That tuning fork is the giveaway. Chatter is a resonance phenomenon. When you get chatter, the cutter, the workpiece, or both vibrate at a certain frequency. It's usually a terrible screeching noise, and chatter is related in many ways to a microphone with feedback over the PA system. The thing to remember is chatter will destroy your surface finish and tool life. When you hear it, you need to stop it just as quickly as you can. You'll often hear a little chirp in the corners on a job or perhaps even a little chatter in certain parts of the job. That's still bad for your tools and surface finish but can be tolerated if you can't fix it. But prolonged loud chatter is very destructive and has to be stopped quickly. The first thing most CNCers will do when they hear chatter is they slow their machine down. Be careful doing this suddenly as reducing the spindle RPMs without reducing the corresponding feed rate will dramatically raise your chip load and can break your tool quickly. If you take the speed the spindle is running and multiply it by the number of flutes or inserts on your cutter, that's the chatter frequency that you're hearing. Chatter is a resonance. It sings and creates a pretty pure, if obnoxious, tone. Your goal is to change the spindle RPM so they're no longer on that resonant chatter frequency. Like I said, most CNC's first reaction is to slow down, but chatter doesn't really care whether you slow down or speed up. Either way, you're moving off the resonant frequency and the chatter should stop if you get far enough away. Now, if the tool doesn't deflect, it won't vibrate and there will be no chatter. Any tool will deflect a tiny bit as soon as you apply a force to it, but if you can keep the deflection low enough, the chatter will be minimized. There are several ways to reduce deflection. Start by minimizing your tool stick out. The less distance from tip to tool holder, the better. Second, if you can increase the tool's diameter at all, even just a small amount, you'll make it dramatically more resistant to deflection and therefore chatter. If you can't do either one of those two things, try reducing the cutting forces by reducing either your cut depth, your cut width, or both. Lastly, if all else fails, reduce your feeds and speeds to reduce the cutting forces. I talked about all of this in an earlier CNC Chef video on tool deflection. The graphic shows my G-Wizard calculator, which the other video showed you how to use to minimize your deflection. Check that out for more. Here's something a lot of CNCers don't understand, so let's dig into it. Chatter is predictable. That means we can prevent it before it ever happens and we can plan for it. This fancy diagram that you see here is called a stability lobe diagram. It graphs spindle RPMs along the bottom versus cutting force up and down. Those spikes are places where you can run a lot of cutting forces and things are stable. In other words, you'll get no chatter. The valleys are places where even small amounts of force immediately produce chatter. Obviously, if we can target the spikes, we can maximize machine productivity without getting chatter. But where can you get a stability load diagram like this for your machining? This table gives what I call chatter repeatability variables. If you keep these variables the same, you'll get chatter at the same spindle RPMs and cutting force every time. CNCers are surprised more by how few variables that have to be held the same than anything. You need to have the same machine. Even having the same model, the machines are different because of things like the bearing preload in the spindle and many other factors. So you'll need to track the chatter behavior by machine in order to predict it. Next variable, the tool holder. It doesn't have to be literally the same tool holder, just the same make and model. Same with the cutter. If you use the same make and model cutter, you'll get the same chatter if the other variables are also the same. The last variable is the stick out. It has to be the same to reproduce chatter at the same points. By the way, you can sometimes tune the chatter out just by changing your stick out. 
reduce it to make things more rigid, and that will also change the chatter frequency. Even sticking the tool out a little further can change your chatter frequency, even though it reduces rigidity. Might still be a good idea, though, because it might let you run higher feeds and speeds. That's something you can experiment with. Okay, we know if we hold those variables the same, chatter will repeat every time. And so we can avoid it if we know which RPMs to avoid, and that's the last thing you need to figure out. There are three strategies you can use to tame chatter by mapping where it occurs. First, and the easiest, just keep a notebook that lists for each combination of machine, tool holder, cutter, and stick out what spindle RPMs got you the chatter. If you avoid them in the future, and you certainly can, you'll avoid the chatter altogether. Second, you could do systematic testing. That picture in the middle shows a block of aluminum where they took successive cuts and then look for chatter marks on the wall of the workpiece. Each pass is at a different spindle RPM, each one being 500 RPM faster. And you can see on the walls there exactly where the bad spindle RPMs fall. Last thing, you can purchase special instruments to do what's called a tap test. You attach an accelerometer to the tool, as it shows here, and then tap the tool with a test hammer. That produces data that goes into some computer software, and it gives you back a stability lobe diagram that tells you exactly what RPMs you should run. Armed with that kind of systematic knowledge, you now know how to tame chatter in your shop. I'm Bob Warfield. Thanks for listening, and I'll be back soon with another CNC Chef video.